Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. This is part two in my ongoing series of no time lapse videos in which you're going to see me complete an entire illustration in real time. Uh, last week I did the pencils, this week I'm going to be doing the watercolors. Now before I get started, I want to bring out this copy of Imogene's Antlers, a book by David Small, uh, who is one of the greatest uh, children's book uh, writer illustrators uh, that America has ever produced and I was very lucky to have him as my teacher back in college and I'm going to be talking all about him uh, this week as I'm going through the different people who influenced me. Look at this, what he uh, wrote for me. For Mark, keep drawing or else. Much love from me and Imogene. So you can uh, see that I was fortunate enough to uh, meet the guy in real life and to kind of become friends with him and we stay in touch all these years later. I wanted uh, you all to see his uh, style of uh, illustration because I think you can see the influence on me and uh, where I headed uh, as the years went by uh, into, you know, sort of children's oriented comic books. And uh, certainly with this style of watercolor, and you'll be seeing me do uh, watercolor today. Uh, there is, without doubt, influence from David Small. But I'm going to refocus the camera right now and we'll get started with uh, adding color to this illustration. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump in. And I am going to be starting with the lighter colors before moving on to the darker colors. That's always my preferred way of doing things when it comes to watercolor. Um, but otherwise, let me talk a little bit about David Small, how I first met him. Um, uh, sort of an interesting story. I went to college, you know, uh, Kalamazoo College, majoring in art. Uh, but I did not meet David Small right away. Um, I had this friend who was from Denmark uh, named Vivian. And um, I remember distinctly she said to me, Oh, hey, Mark, the, this artist uh, who is the sort of college artist in residence is going to be doing a little talk today. Um, why don't you come along and see what he has to say? Um, and I, so I went along to this thing. It was very informal. He was just uh, in one of the classrooms and talking about different things. And while he was there, he said, you know, uh, you have talented artists right here in the school. And he pulled out this poster for a the school play, uh, the school uh, production of Hedda Gobbler. And uh, I was the guy who had done that poster. So he was actually praising my work without realizing that I was there uh, in the room. And uh, it's funny looking back, I sort of feel like it, it was destined that the two of us uh, should connect because of uh, that moment. But uh, in any case, uh, as you can imagine, as someone who was just you know, a college student and sort of dreaming of making my way in the art world, it was a thrill to meet someone who was actually already doing it. You know, he had these published books. That book that I just showed you, Imogene's Antlers, um, was just being published right around that time, and he had a um, an exhibition of his of the original art uh, there on campus. And, uh, you know, my jaw was hitting the floor as I looked at all these amazing uh, illustrations that he had created in watercolor, uh, largely, with an addition of colored pencil, and so that's a, a very direct influence, as you see me uh, working in a way that's very similar to the way he worked, of uh, starting with pencil sketches and then adding watercolor. Uh, in any case, uh, the real thing with meeting David Small, um, well, there's two different things. Uh, there's the direct instruction that he gave me, which is very important. Uh, but then there's also just the sort of mentor role that he played for me. I've sometimes told the story, I don't know if I've told this in the video, but um, in video form like here on YouTube before now, but um, I remember going in to show him my work, you know, because I, I talked to him and said, boy, I'd like to get your advice on my work and how I could improve. And, and uh, he said, yeah, well, bring your work in to show me. Uh, he had this tiny little studio, you know, the college at that time had only been able to provide him this truly <laughs> smaller than a bathroom kind of size uh, studio that he was working in. Uh, but he invited me up there to uh, show my work to him, and I had been used to getting a lot of praise from people all my life. You know, I had kind of, I'd describe it as being the big fish in a small pond. I would, 
I was that kid who liked to draw, and there weren't too many other kids that were as into it as I was, and so I always got to be the person that was showered with praise. And when I brought in all my work uh, to show David Small, it was maybe the first time in my life that somebody uh, did not seem blown away by my work, and he flipped through it quite quickly, and uh, he didn't tear it apart, but he didn't praise everything, and uh, he I could see that he... He was um, someone who had seen a lot of uh, great art students in his time, and it, it kind of gave me this uh, much-needed perspective on uh, my talent and how much harder I probably needed to work to improve, that, uh, that I had been coasting maybe a little all my life until I met David, and he was the guy who gave me what I call the great big creative kick in the pants that I needed. And he said, you know, you it's time for you to work harder. And uh, he got me to study the masters. That was his big thing. You know, he'd do studies of uh, drawings by, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and Rembrandt and uh, Degas and all of these uh, great people, from uh, mainly from Europe, the great European masters. Uh, and that was a big turning point for me in terms of getting uh, influence from serious artists in a way that I never had up until that point. Uh, and, um, you know, as I said, just looking at his own work, his own way of doing things, that was a huge inspiration and influence. Uh, I had never really tried watercolors until I saw what he had done with them. And while I did not immediately like learn watercolors from him, uh, I think I just got the idea of that as a good way of adding color from him. And uh, it was later that I began trying to add color by way of watercolor, and, and I suppose I was self-taught in that regard. I just kept practicing. Um, but the the whole idea of of considering watercolor as an approach uh, probably came from him. You know, I feel like these days markers are uh, as popular, if not more popular, among young people uh, adding color. If uh, if David had done all of his work with markers, I wonder if that would not have become the thing that I ended up gravitating towards. Uh, in any case, one other day I wanted to talk about was when I was trying to uh, do oil painting. I was taking an oil painting class, and just because of the way things were set up at the college, David Small was not the teacher of that class. They actually had someone who was more uh, of a sculptor teaching the class, and she did a great job. But um, I was trying to do this still life that included an orange you know, sitting on a table in front of me, and I was using orange paint from straight from the tube of orange oil paint, you know, to try, and it just wasn't working in terms of capturing uh, the color in a pleasing way. And David Small came in, and, you know, he was off duty, I suppose, and it wasn't the middle of a class, I was just there on my own. And he said, well, here, let me show you how to mix colors, and he took uh, he got rid of all these colors like purple and uh, green and so forth, and he just reduced it to the primary colors of uh, blue, red, and yellow, and then uh, maybe black and white. And he said, you know, these are really the only colors you need. And he showed me how using the yellow and the red, as you were taught when you were a kid, to produce orange, you're going to get a more interesting orange. You're going to get more varied shades of orange than if you just use orange straight out of the tube. Uh, and boy, in about 10 minutes, he taught me so much more about color mixing than I had ever learned. Uh, and that was the magic of meeting David Small. You know, even without trying, he could teach me a, a sort of a life-changing uh, piece of uh, information or new skill that set me on the right course going forward. Um, but I was just lucky to to get to know him as a, as a friend, you know, and, and the truth is, by chance, he was going through a very difficult time uh, in his life right then because his job was being uh, eliminated uh, at the school, and he was in this sort of weird limbo uh, where he didn't 
know if he should continue teaching or, you know, they had greatly reduced his uh, hours and, um, you know, he was dependent on the college for his uh, living place. They, he was living in this house, I remember, that was quite an impressive house, but he, it wasn't really his. Uh, he, he and his wife, uh, Sarah, were the caretakers of this big house that the college owned and the college would use for like throwing parties and stuff or maybe allowing guests to spend the weekend or whatever and so they were like the caretakers of this uh, house and it was a beautiful house and everyone who went there said oh you're so lucky to live here but they didn't really live there they lived in these these back rooms you know and there was probably a lot of work involved um, in the upkeep and so forth. Anyway, that they were going to be taken out of that house, I think, at that time because of the, the way they were eliminating his job. And, uh, you know, the, the future was not clear for David Small at that time. So in a funny way, though I didn't realize it because as a college student and I was so focused on myself <laughs> rather than what anyone else was going through, I didn't realize he was going through quite a difficult time. Um... Uh, but happy to say, by eliminating his job, they forced him to become the uh, illustrator that he was always meant to be. He, he had to go full-time into uh, being a children's book illustrator. And, of course, he more or less instantly uh, found success. And uh, I suppose he looks back and thinks, best thing that ever happened to me, you know. If I, if I had not had that job pulled away from me, I might have continued incrementally making my way toward being uh, a full-time uh, illustrator. So, anyway, that uh, that was just a very lucky thing that happened to me in my life, uh, meeting David, and uh, I was, uh, for a while, I sort of fell out of touch with him. I went overseas to teach uh, English uh, in Taiwan and Japan. I used to mail things to him. Back in those days, people used to mail things to each other. Back in the sands of time. Uh, and um, that was how we would stay in touch for a while. And then eventually I just lo completely lost touch with him. Um, and I, you know, we were living in the same state, but my, our paths were never going to cross because he was way over near Kalamazoo. I was living uh, in southeast Michigan. Uh, but then I was listening to this radio program, and they were interviewing David Small because he got uh, nominated uh, for the Caldecott, or I think he had won the Caldecott, was what it was. Caldecott is like the Academy Award for children's book illustration. You can't go any higher than winning the Caldecott. And I think um, he had probably been nominated one or two times prior to but he actually won the Caldecott for this book called... Uh, so you want to be president. He didn't write it, but he illustrated it. And um, I guess just hearing that, I was like, oh man, I, I got to reconnect with David Small. Falling out of touch with him was one of my life's great regrets, you know. So I didn't dare to uh, try to call him or anything, although I think I had the phone number. But at that time, I decided to just... Uh, write him a letter and um, get in touch with him that way and uh, I ended up mailing him all my Akiko comic books which I, I had done like 30 or 40 of these comic books and I suppose I was at this stage where it's like I gotta show David that I've done good you know <laughs> that I'm following in his footsteps the best I could I sent him this massive box way more it was like total overkill um, but he did, he, he wrote back and said, wow, man, you've been busy. And we did arrange to uh, reconnect. And uh, some years later, I, I actually went out there and brought my kids with me. And, you know, we had lunch together and so forth. And then at different times over the years, we've uh, periodically been able to reconnect. Last, last summer, I was able to see him again. And um, see both him both David and uh, Sarah. We had a marvelous meal together, and he was showing me his latest books. And if you like graphic novels, you got to check out uh, David's graphic novels. 
Um, hang on just a second. I will allow myself to pause and go grab his graphic novel. So here's David Small's uh, uh, graphic novel memoir, Stitches. Incredibly powerful uh, story, and it's all true, really, telling his own uh, childhood story and the, the incredible, incredibly challenging things that he went through. Uh, but you can see his, uh, his style has evolved over time, and he didn't just sort of stay put with the, that Imogene's antler style. Uh, and this book was nominated for a National Book Award, uh, and you really, if you haven't read it yet, and you like uh, well-written and well-illustrated uh, masterpieces, <laughs> really that is uh, one for you to check out, add to your uh, to-read list uh, right away. And he's got a newer one called Home After Dark, uh, also incredible. Uh, both of them, you know, the, the amount of work that he put into these, they're like 300 plus pages, uh, each of them. Uh, puts many of the rest of us to shame, actually, in terms of how hard he worked uh, on these books. And uh, so anyway, that is kind of bringing me down to the end of this week of uh, the coloring stage. Next week I'm going to be back um, with uh, doing the line work, and I can see that I probably have a fair amount of final coloring that need, will need to be done during that, you know, the final polishing stage the week after. Next, um, but I think we're in fairly good shape, and uh, I think we're managing to keep these videos, uh, as I had hoped to, uh, down to around 15 minutes each. And uh, I think it's working out, this, this idea of talking about my uh, influences. Next week I will be, be back to talk uh, about uh, one more uh, of my influences. won't reveal what it is until we get to it, but hang on just a second. I'm going to grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them like Chibi, my book on drawing in a Chibi style, and uh, The Two Pencil Method, my very latest book. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who choose to support me by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you. Whoa, it's rolling away. Hey, brush, that's not very kind of you. Stop rolling, please. I'll have to hold it in place. <laughs> I want to lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon. Bye. <laughs>